Kingdom Voice Network, dispensing the gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 10, verse 70. This is the testimony of the people that Jesus sent to the towns and the villages to proclaim his kingdom. The first thing the Bible says is that they all returned. Meanwhile, it's not everyone that left Egypt that entered into Canaan. But these ones went and they all returned. Irrespective of the fact that they had different levels of maturity, they all returned. Irrespective of the fact that they were entering into different terrains, they all returned. So the Bible says that they, and the 70 returned again with joy. You will return. Because tonight, we are going to be sent forth. By this time next year, we'll come back. And you will return. When we come back, we want to take inventory of what you have done for Jesus. Because you are supposed to be living here with a sent mentality. Knowing that I am sent. If you know that you are sent, you will begin to see the weakness of cities. The weakness of your office. What you can take advantage of to represent Jesus. How you can speak for Jesus within your own context. Because you know you are sent and you carry a sent mentality. A man with a sent mentality cannot be lost in the crowd. He knows why he woke up this morning. He knows the reason for which God had given him grace. He knows why he earned the last set of pounds. He knows the reason why God gave him the opportunities that he has been given. Because he goes around with the same mentality. Many times when we give um, testimonies of new jobs, new opportunities, new levels of finances, we see it as a better life. You don't know that it's actually responsibility. It's because you are not sent. That you see everything through the prism of self. You don't see your advantages, your promotions as an opportunity for the kingdom of God. May God deliver us from that self-centeredness in the name of Jesus. So the seventy returned. This was their testimony. Lord, even the demons, the devils, are subject unto us through your name. That's the first, first testimony. You know, you know, are you with me? You're not with me. You know, in that scripture where we read in the book of Psalms 24, the people that were sent ahead of Jesus had to contend with the gates. And I told you that gates refer to authorities. Windows refer to blessings. Doors refer to opportunities. And I don't have time to explain all of that. An apostolic person should know gates. How to contend with gates. You should know. Because when you have broken to a gate, the next thing that will open to you are windows and doors. Windows and doors are on the other side of gates. The blessings that you are looking for. That will make it easy for you to do the will of God. That job that you need that pays more and then it engages you less. So that you can have more time for prayer. More time to do the things that God has asked you to do. The windows will open. But it is only those that have the capacity to, to design the purpose of the windows that will be able to deploy those, those, those windows for the purpose for which they came. If you can't design those windows, you will lavish it on self. And then the devil will throw you into confusion many months later. And then your case will be worse than when you started. And you will not know why. It's because you went on a parade of self. And you were not able to translate the windows that he opened in order for you to actualize the purpose for which you exist. May you not get suddenly lose the reason why you are in Birmingham, why you are in the United Kingdom. Every opportunity that opens to you is in keeping with that purpose. Why 
Why is it that people that Satan says they never lose sight of their mission? Never. They move with a sent mentality. If the devil sends somebody against you, the person will need to get employment where you work. Other jobs may be paying more, but the objective is you. So they will reject those jobs. It doesn't make sense. Huh? Because it's sent. It needs to be around you. It needs to be the one that will be giving you coffee in the morning. You might think it's love. You, may not, you don't know it's sent. Looking for an occasion. Okay. If you, are, if you go around with a sent mentality, you will see all the doors and the windows. But when you become blind and you are like you are in a forest, it means you have lost yourself. May you recover yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. Like I said, I'm not a pastor. You must have seen it. My wiring is not the wiring of a pastor. I don't speak like a pastor. If he comes now, he knows how to speak like a pastor. I, 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 I run a cantonment like, like I told you. You don't come to the barracks looking for love. Yeah. Like. If you want to be trained on how to use your weapon, I can try. If you want to walk in the full scope of the anointing that God has given you to bring profit to the kingdom of God, that's my space. If you want to know how to bring down the black wall and break the cedars of Lebanon, I can help. But if you want to drink milk and say glory and, and run fat with obesity, you might need a pastor to be tapping you on the back. Hallelujah. The pastor to encourage you. No. That's not my, that's not my. I've come to wake you up. In the name of Jesus. I had, what I'm teaching you, I taught my wife. When she said, I want to learn, I said, you want to learn? So I taught her how to pick things from the spirit. If she comes here, she can, she can set this place ablaze. Yes. I pray one day I will bring her up. I say, just can do a fire here, can do. So what I'm teaching you, I taught everyone around me. If you stay in my house for one year, you will cast out devils. You will know how to. Mm. We, have, we pray four times, four times. You will learn how to pray. We'll feed you, you eat, but you will pray. Enough food, there'll be food flowing, but prayer will be flowing. Prayer. So that you can take gates. You can humble demons. You can give instructions and you will be obeyed. You've been giving instructions to your family for long. Nothing happened. I can teach you how to be a man of authority. Your preferences, your priorities must be made straight. You must be pure in heart and your hands must be pure. And you must curse every vanity around you and align yourself to Christ as his foot soldier. Your loyalty must be first to him. When you wake up in the morning, you confess how that you are his man for today. You will serve him for today. That if only he can show you what he wants you to do, you will prosecute it without thinking. Tell him that. Every morning, you, re you renew your covenant with him then you'll know what it means to be a custodian of true power, true authority. Satan will have to go backwards. Once upon a time, oh, you know, I have a gift. I told you. I see things. So I've seen demons. Most of them look like dogs, monkeys. But I've seen beasts too. Beast that came to destroy me. And when they came, they could not destroy me. I didn't have any of their property. I saw one and I spoke in tongues for like 35 minutes and it didn't move. And he spoke, but he didn't move the mouth. He spoke through his thoughts and spoke into my thoughts. I said, when we get you, you will not survive. So I now told him, why not now? Get me now. Why are you waiting? He came nine years later. 
Because of court is keep time. Demons keep time. Witches keep time. It's only you that doesn't know when to take your journey. You are available every day. <laughs> Came nine years later. Oh, you think the things that weakened your father won't, won't, won't look for you? They won't look for you. It, it's not about saying, well, no, he's Jesus. Are you his servant? Are you loyal to him? Because if you are loyal to him, everything will bow to him. That day when we emphasized loyalty to Jesus as coming, they came to destroy me. We had finished the crusade. And in that village, it is the oracle that gives names to children. And for six years, the oracle was mute. So every child from six years down was nameless. They were waiting for the time when the oracle would speak again. And we came into the village and preached Christ. And the power of God was so mighty. And they said, ah, the oracle is not as strong as this. So you give our children names now. So part of our job that we did in that village was to give names. And you shall be called Joseph. They were on a long line. Prior to that time, you called them Sss, Sss. <laughs> We gave names to every child six years and under. My pastor that was sent into that village as a missionary was the first person that paid bright price. You know bright price? Uh, the first how much? They don't know bride price. I said, no, we pay. The chief had to come and lift up his hands and say, this is the, the civilization we will follow. The chief. Yes. I've been to villages where they surrender to the whole village. Because I went first to challenge the priest. And he was not as powerful. So they brought people to see so I know what I'm talking about. And I don't say this boastfully, but if I say otherwise, I lied. It's time to wake up. In the name of Jesus. And the 70 returned with joy, saying, first testimony, even the devils were subject to us in your name. You know the word devils in the Greek? It's diamonium. Diamonium is a magistrate. Diamonium are demons that are intellectuals. Demons that are terrible intellectuals. Have you taken time to find out? If you go to Congo, there's a way they bury people. When people die, there's a way they bury people. Is it true? Congo people. Do you know the ritual that is involved in burials in Congo? You don't. You've been here for long. But I'm telling you that there are rituals. But you know what? The intelligence that sets up those rituals is the diamonium. As long as those rituals are going on, there's a ritual behind naming a child. There's a ritual behind the burial. There's a ritual behind marriage. Do you understand that? As long as those rituals are going on, the diamonium is being washed. They institutionalize allegiance to, to the devil in what we call customs and rituals. And... Oh, you're not with me. Okay. Because you're not with me, I will stop there. That's number one. That's number one. The diamonium were subject. You're not with me. So you will labor. When you labor for one more year, without knowing how to handle diamonium. When we come back for the next conference, we will hear your own, your testimony. We'll come back next year. Whether you were able to do damage to them. Because if you are going into the territory, the first gate you will see, the first authority you see is the diamonium. Like I said, you are not interested in that. We'll leave that. So, the next point... That's the first thing that they encounter. The diamonium. The magistrate. The one that sets laws. So, 
Oh. You know, you know what they call parliament? Your parliament. That's where the diamond will stay. It will bend the mind of anyone that is making decisions there. To ensure that what will pass through the parliament is consistent with the way of the magistrate. And as long as you follow it, you are giving honor to the diamond. It's very intelligent. Oh, you don't understand. Okay, you, you just... All right, that's number one. Number two. Jesus was the only personality that did not follow them. He, he sent them, but he stayed back. Kingdom Voice Network, dispensing the gospel of the kingdom.